everyone. Today we will be learning oxidation and reduction reactions and this is part of the production of materials topic. Now let us begin. We'll be starting with redox reaction. Now what are redox reactions? There are two half equations or half reactions happening in a redox reaction. In a redox reaction there is an oxidation reaction as well as a reduction reaction. So what these reactions are is oxidation is a loss of electrons which means in an oxidation reaction the species would lose electrons while in a reduction reaction the species would gain electrons. Now note that these are half reactions as in both of them together will complete or will make a whole reaction happen. Now as you can see there is a little memorizing tool here for you oil rig. Now this is a way you can memorize that oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction is a gaining of electrons. Now if we look at electrochemistry, now this is chemistry that uses electricity. Chemical reactions involve valence electrons. Now there is a relationship between electrons and electricity and we'll be looking at this in this topic. Now in Electrons is transferred between atoms or groups of atoms. That means an electron is lost from one atom or a group of atoms and then joined to the another atom or another group of atoms. Movement of electrons create electricity or electrical energy. Now it is this movement of atoms or movement of electrons that create electrical energy. Now if you look at this reaction here, this is a reduction reaction where the oxidant gains an electron. It may gain more than one electron depending on how many valence shells it has. So for example zinc, the zinc ion would gain two electrons while for example a, a sodium ion would only gain one electron. So you can see that the electrons depend on which group they are from. So the oxidant would undergo reduction. Now that's very important to remember because it's not the reductant that undergoes reduction, it is the oxidant. Now oxidant would undergo reduction and when it's undergoing reduction, the oxidation number lowers. We'll be learning about the oxidation number later on, but just remember that the oxidation number lowers in a reduction reaction and then it would produce its products. Now this reaction is what you call an oxidation reaction. So there's a reductant and the reductant would undergo oxidation. And in this reaction, the oxidation number rises. So the reductant's oxidation number would rise to form a product. And during this process, it would release an electron. So you can see that process. And this is an oxidation reaction. A reaction in which a metal converts the ion of another less reactive metal to its neutral form. So you can see that this reaction where a metal converts the ion of another less reactive metal to its ion in the neutral form is a redox reaction. So electrons are transferred to the less reactive metal. In other words, the more reactive metal would would um, undergo oxidation and it would produce its ion and then produce an electron with this. So that's what's happening. Now let's look at this in a greater depth. We'll first look at oxidation. Now this is the process of oxidation. We have the atom and in that atom one electron is lost. So one electron is given off. So this is called the loss of electrons. In a reduction reaction, what happens is the lost electron from the oxidation reaction is gained from the other atom. So you can see this ion here is gaining an electron. And this is called the gaining of electrons. Remember oil rig? Oxidation is the lo loss of electrons while reduction is a gaining of electrons. Redox reactions. Oxidation of zinc metal. Now we'll look at an example here. We have zinc and it's reacting with the copper ion. So an electron from zinc, two electrons from zinc 
are going to attach to the copper ion to make a copper metal. So if you look at it carefully, you can see, there we go, it goes and attaches to the copper ion to make a copper metal. Reaction where a species is oxidized, as seen above, and the other is reduced. So one species is oxidized and the other is reduced. Redox reaction can be divided into oxidization and um, reduction half equations. And as you can see, the word redox come from these two words, where red ox. So redox comes from oxidation and reduction. For example, we'll take an example here. We have zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid. So zinc and hydrochloric acid react to form zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. And in this reaction, this is what you call a redox reaction. So there's going to be a reduction reaction as well as an oxidation reaction happening. We'll first look at the oxidation reaction. So the half equation would look like this. So we have zinc. Now zinc is going to oxidize to form zinc ion and two electrons as you can see. Now where, where did we get this ion from? The ion comes from the zinc chloride. The zinc chloride it's an ionic compound. So zinc is going to have a 2 plus valency as you can see here. So it's in an ionic form here. That's why we have the zinc ion. We have a reduction half equation happening at the same time because it's a redox reaction. In the reduction half equation what happens is there's going to be a H ion reacting with two electrons to form hydrogen gas. Now if you go back here, you can see that hydrochloric acid. Now this is in aqueous solution, so the hydrogen is going to be in its ionic form. So hydrogen, the ion, would gain the two electrons from here, the zinc, and those would form hydrogen gas. Now it is very important to know that this electron doesn't come from a random place. It's not added. It comes from the zinc here. So the, two, the electron here belongs to the zinc initially. So our net ionic equation, excluding the chloride spectator ions, would look like this. Now how do you get this? You just add these two together. When you add these two together, you would get zinc plus the hydro hydrogen ion on this side. Now we cancel out the electrons because there's going to be equal amounts of electrons so they cancel out like that. And then you would add this side of the arrow. So you would have zinc ion plus hydrogen gas as you can see. Now this is a net ionic equation. So if you're asked to write a net ionic equation, you would not write this. This is our chemical equation and this is our net ionic equation. The difference between these two are that these chloride ions are not in it because we call chloride ions in this case spectator ions. It means that it doesn't get involved in the tr transferring of electrons but it is still part of the reaction because you can see at, here the chloride ions are bonded to the hydrogen but in this case the chloride ions are bonded to the zinc. Metal displacement reaction. Metal displacement reactions are redox reaction between two metals. So under redox reactions comes metal displacement reactions. So for example, we have zinc metal into a copper ion solution. Now copper is a metal and zinc is a metal. But copper is in its ionic form, so it's not a metal. It's going to be in an ionic compound. Now neutral form, ionic form. So we have the more reactive more reactive, giving its electron to the less reactive here. So in other words, what happened is the more reactive metal, it would give away an electron and become an ion, while the less reactive would gain that electron and become a metal. So that's what's happening here. One of the products is displaced from solution as a separate phase, usually solid or gas. If we looked at the example before, we realized that the hydrogen is given off or it gains an electron to form hydrogen gas. So that's what it's me, uh, said from here. Usually as a solid or a gas, 
it's given off. Reactions between a metal and a solution containing the ions of a different metal are called metal displacement reactions and we just looked at one then where copper and zinc would react. The more reactive metal undergoes oxidation, the loss of electrons while and is dissolved in. The ions of the other metal are reduced to ele elemental metal where deposits out of the solution. So now these two are very important because you have to know that the more reactive metal undergoes oxidization and the less reactive metal undergoes reduction. Now that is very important. Now to know which metal is more reactive or re less reactive, what you do is you would find, you would take your standard potentials table out and in that the ones at the top, the elements at the top are the more reactive and the elements at the bottom are the less reactive. So you can find out which one's oxidizing and which one's reducing using your standard potentials table, which is in the back of your periodic table. Metal displacement reactions, the more reactive metal will dissolve into the solution. So we just covered that. The less reactive metal will precipitate into the solution. Now look at this reaction here. We have an aqueous solution and when the metal is gone in, the metal will corrode. So you would lose more metal there. As you can see, the metal is going away. And instead, the electrons that are lost from that metal here is gained by the aqueous solution. And it would form metal deposits as you can see from here. When zinc metal is placed into a solution of copper sulfate containing copper ions, zinc atoms are oxidized to zinc ions. So you can see zinc, the metal, would form zinc ions and two electrons as a result. Now you can see that the zinc is being oxidized. So zinc is more reactive than copper. Copper ions are being reduced to copper atoms that precipitate into the solution. So these two electrons we lost here are gained by the copper ions to form copper metal. So if you work out the net ionic equation, you know you would add the two equations together. We take out the electrons because the electrons are the same. So if you add them together, you get zinc plus copper ions Going to the next part of the equation, you get zinc ions plus the copper metal. When zinc metal is placed into a solution of copper sulfate containing copper ions, the zinc ions are oxidized to zinc ions. Zinc is uh, oxidized to zinc ions, so you can see here. When iron is placed into the solution of containing lead, Iron atoms are oxidized to iron ions. So you can see, like for example, the more reactive metal is being oxidized. That means it's undergoing oxidization. Now if you look at the standard potentials table, you would realize that zinc is above copper and also that iron is above lead. Now if lead ions are re reduced to lead atoms, so you can see that Lead ions would gain two electrons from the iron to form lead solid. So again, the net ionic equation, very simple. You just add the two. You would get iron plus lead ions, giving you iron ions and lead, the metal. Metals are ranked by their reactivities with water, oxygen and acids. Now, for example, we, can, we have three different categories where we can put our metals in. If metals react with all three of these, they're very reactive. However, if they react with water and acids, they're mildly reactive. If they're reacting with only acids, they're somewhat reactive. And we also have the inert ones like gold, copper and silver that don't react with any of them. This is known as the activity series. And as I told you before, the activity series is usually found at the back of the periodic table. They can also be ranked by the ability to displace other metals 
from solution. Now these two, the activity series and the ability to displace other metals is the same thing. So that means the more active they are, the more tendency they would displace or they would have to displace other metals from the solution. So you can see that they're the very similar thing. So for example, if a strip of copper is placed into a solution of zinc sulfate, no reaction would occur. Now why is this? Because copper is less reactive than zinc. So copper does not have the ability to displace the zinc ions. But if zinc was placed in a copper sulfate solution, the copper would have the the zinc would have the ability to displace the copper. This is because zinc ions have a lesser tendency to gain electrons to be reduced in other words than copper ions. So copper atoms will not give up electrons to zinc ions. Re reactivity of commonly encountered metals. Now if a piece of copper is placed into a solution of silver ions the copper metal displaces silver ions from the solution. So the silver ions have a greater tendency to gain electrons than copper ions. Again, I would ask you to go back to your standard potentials table and look up copper and silver. Isn't copper above silver? Meaning that copper is more reactive than silver. So copper has a tendency to displace the silver ions in solution. So that is why there is going to be a redox reaction happening if copper metal is in a silver ion solution. These experiments allow us to arrange these three metal ions in the order of ease of reduction. So you can see that zinc ions are the easiest to reduce while a copper ions here which is less than the silver ions here. So you can see a little activity series but we'll be doing this or the back of your periodic table the standard potentials table has a larger view of this with all the metals now this is what it looks like except your one would look would be horizontal vertical in the back of your periodic table we have a horizontal view making it easier for us so it starts off with the more reactive metals and moving on to the less reactive metals it starts off with potassium sodium, lithium, barium, then we have calcium, magnesium. Now note all these are from the group 1 and 2 elements, making them more reactive. As you learned in year 11 and 10, the group 1 and 2 elements are very reactive. Then we transcend to the transition metals. We have aluminium, zinc, iron, tin, lead, copper, and then we have the inert ones silver, platinum and gold. Now they don't react as easily and they are very inert so they don't react at all. The activity series is descending order of reactivity. As you can see it's descending this way. Group 1 is the most reactive followed by group 2. As you can see these three here are group 1 metals and then it goes to group 2. Metals on the left will displace metals on the right. In other words, these metals would displace these ions. Now let's move on to some questions here. We have question one. Which of the following lists, con lists contain metals which will all displace tin from a solution of tin to nitrate? Now notice the word all here, which, which means that all of the metals listed have to be able to displace tin from tin nitrate. Now we'll move to uh, option A. Option A says copper, iron and silver. Now we have to refer to our, our reactivity table here, reactivity series. Tin is Sn which we have here. So I would first put a little mark on our tin just to compare it. We have copper which is on this side then we have iron which is on this side and we have silver. Silver is Ag, so here. Now you can see that iron would be able to displace the tin. However, copper and, copper and um, silver are not able to displace it. 
So clearly these two do not have the ability, making this an incorrect statement. Moving to option B now, option B says copper, magnesium and lead. Again we know that copper cannot displace zinc, I mean tin because copper is less reactive than tin. So we know for a fact that B is incorrect again. Let's move to option C. Option C has nickel, iron and lead. So we have lead here. Nickel is Nickel is not in the list, but it is less reactive. And again, iron is also more reactive, but because of lead, this is not the correct answer. And now we come to option D. Option D has magnesium, aluminium and zinc. Now with option D, we know that option D, so zinc is our metal that we are comparing. Magnesium is over here, which makes it more reactive, so magnesium is correct. Aluminium is here, again more reactive than uh, tin, making it able to be displaced. And again we have zinc. Zinc is more reactive than tin, so all these three are, have the ability to displace tin from tin nitrate. So clearly option D is our answer. Now let's move on to question two. Question 2 is also a multiple choice question. Which of the following metals cannot displace copper ions in copper nitrate solution? Now I would underline cannot because you have to compare all of these and see which one is the least reactive. Now we have to consider option A. Option A is zinc. So zinc is here and what's our copper? Copper is here. So copper is more reactive than zinc, I mean zinc is more reactive than copper. So clearly zinc is, has the ability to displace copper ions, making zinc the incorrect answer. Now let's move on to option B. Option B is magnesium. Magnesium is over here, again more reactive than copper. Therefore magnesium has the ability to displace copper. So magnesium is not the correct answer because it's asking for the metal that cannot displace copper. Option C, option C is iron. Iron's here. And iron has the ability to displace copper because iron is more reactive than copper. So iron is not the correct answer. Moving to option D, option D says silver. Now look at this. Copper is here. And silver is here. So clearly silver does not have the ability to displace copper because silver is less reactive than copper. So that means that silver is the answer. Now going to question 3. Question 3 has a diagram in it which means we have to refer to the diagram when we are answering our question. A piece of zinc was placed in a copper sulfate solution. So you can see the zinc here and the copper sulfate solution. After a while, the copper sulfate solution changed from dark blue to light blue and copper was deposited, indicating that a redox reaction had taken place. Now, in this question, what things you have to note is that it turned from dark blue to light blue, meaning that the color has discolored and also that copper was deposited. So the question asks, describe the movement of electrons. Now what do you think the deposit of copper is? Copper solid, right? Because it's copper metals, is a deposit of copper. And then we had the color of copper, uh, the copper sulfate solution discoloring, which means that as copper, the solid increased, we had the copper ions decrease. So zinc is a more reactive metal here. Zinc atoms are oxidized to zinc ions. Copper is the less reactive metal. If you look at your standard potentials table, you will see that again. Copper ions are reduced to copper atoms. So electrons have transferred from the zinc atoms 
to the copper ions because this is oxidized and this is reduced and you remember in oxidization you would lose electrons and in reduction you gain electrons so electrons have gone from zinc to copper moving to question 4 now question 4 says the following equation shows a redox reaction which species is being oxidized now what is oxidized mean oxidization so anything that's undergoing oxidization from oil rig you remember oxidization is the losing of electrons so magnesium here is losing electrons if you look at here we have magnesium now magnesium is in metallic, metallic form and magnesium would give away an electron and become an ion here as you can see so when you're writing your half equation it should look like this where you have magnesium the solid reacting to give us magnesium the ion it has two plus and giving us two electrons in turn now you always add your states and make sure all your charges are balanced so here we have a charge of zero and here we have a charge of plus two and the electron has a charge of minus one and we have two electrons giving us a minus two plus two minus two gives us zero so the charges are balanced so when you're writing your ion half equation ionic half equation you should always mention about the charges and make sure they're all balanced now moving to question five the following equation shows a redox reaction again we have a redox reaction here we have chlorine gas reacting with potassium bromide solution it gives us sodium chloride solution and bromine gas liquid so we have bromine liquid being produced now which species is being reduced now reduced mean undergoing reduction Re uh, from oil rig we remember reduction is the gaining of electrons so chlorine is reduced where it gains electrons we have chlorine gas it gains two electrons as you can see from here to form the chlorine ion we have here now that brings us to the end of the lesson where we learned about oxidation and reduction so oxidization is when something loses electrons while reduction is the gaining of electrons and this is all part of the redox reaction